Okay, good. Good. So, good evening, everyone, um, and thank you for joining us at this um, February Tripart Care Emotional Wellbeing Hub. I am your host and the facilitator and the convener of the meeting. Um, and my name is. Could I ask that we all please mute? Um, please let's all mute our phones so oh, we can. Um, please let's all mute our phones so that we can all um, have a good time tonight um, so that we can all enjoy the meeting thank you for doing that right okay so um i'm dr t Ayodele ajai i'm the convener of the emotional tripart care emotional well-being hub and i'm so delighted to have you join us this evening um, at the february edition of the well um well-being hub um thank you for coming on time and we're just going to get started Today's theme is on toxic relationships, recognition, and recovery. And um, just I'm just going to quickly start. Um, just whilst people are here, just whilst we are getting um, to know ourselves, I'm quite keen to know where people have joined us from tonight. So uh, please just um, tell us. Please type in the chats where you've joined us from. Um, um, we, we just want to get a feel of who is in the room and what the geographical span is like. So please just type in the chat. Okay, Essex, we've got Essex. Um, thank you for joining us from Ken Joseph. Okay, we've got Sheffield, Peterborough, we've got Kent. Right, let's keep them coming. Okay, right, we've got the USA, we've got Greenwich, okay. Right, let's keep them coming. Okay, we've got Bexley Heath, we've got London, we've got Manchester, Bromley, Cambridge, Lagos. Okay, Lagos, ooh. Thank you for joining us all the way from sunny Lagos, Bexley, Sodok, London. Okay, let's keep them coming. Norwich, Abuja. Oh, thank you, Tosin, for joining us from Abuja, Inverness. Oh, wow, that's my big cousin. Uh, oh, wow, that's another co that's another cousin from uh, from the states. Thank you all for joining us. Right. Okay. Good. So um, I welcome everyone very very warmly. We've got quite a bit to get through today. Thank you for. Right, so um, Tripart Care Hub is an emotional well-being hub, and basically the the ethos of the club of this um, hub is to really give emotional well-being support to our community. Um, over the lock, we we started this just um, soon after the lockdown started. Uh, very, um, and and that was because. Um, it was apparent that there were people who were having difficulties coping with their mental well-being uh, during the lockdown and a lot of people were having difficult experiences in terms of their emotional health and that's how they started and over the period um, in june 2021 which was last june we actually had a four weeks intensive course which was the um, tripart care well-being hub and thereafter um, since um, October, we've been having a monthly hub. We usually meet on the last um, Thursday of the month, and it's usually online. So if you if you find that you you like what you see what you see today, um, please then feel free to subsequently join us. Usually, um, the the meetings are advertised on all my social social media hubs, um, and that's where to get to know about the meetings. So um, a bit about me, as I said, I'm a consultant psychiatrist. I've been working in the NHS in psychiatry for the last 22 years. And um, in addition to that, I've also been privileged to occupy a number of roles that have actually enabled me to be able to do what I do now. Um, I very much, I'm very much passionate about public mental health. And um, that's something that I really enjoy doing. But also, um, I also have a number of medical education roles in terms of I'm the medical regional medical education undergraduate med med education education lead 
um, in the re in a region of my trust. That means I'm responsible for um, for coordinating delivery and um, delivering content of medical school to medical students who are in their psychiatric placement and organizing those placements. In addition to that, um, you also do know that um, um, a lot a lot of you know that I also run a mentoring organization for young people from disadvantaged backgrounds who would like to go to medical school. So we run um, a mentoring scheme where um, young people are supported with their medical school application and um, with a view to then um, support them as well to be able to make a successful entry into medical school. Um, the other roles I occupy, I sit on a number of charities, um, board of charities, and also chair um, a couple of them. Um, in addition to that, um, the, the, today's topic is particularly very interesting, and I feel that um, I'm actually coming from a place of experience in terms of um, having um, been able to interact with a lot of people in, in, in that regard. Um, and also the experience I bring um, uh, being, being say, um, having the responsibility for the young people. Um, I'm on the pastoral team of my church, and um, that means that I have um, my remit is for young people. And I've also, along with my wife, had the privilege of being able to um, conduct marriage classes, pre-marriage classes for a number of young people who want to, who are preparing for marriage. So um, all of those experiences, I'm hoping that I'm bringing to the table today and that um, everyone is going to have a fruitful time. It's going to be worth your while um, for coming. Um, so that's a bit about us. The tripart care model, tripart care, it's actually two words merged into one. one. It means three, which is tri and part. Basically, um, tripart care, I'm very open about the fact that uh, my Christian faith actually shapes a lot of my views um, in terms of the way I see life. And um, one of those, one of the, the, one of the models from, from that Christian faith is the fact that we are human beings made up of um, our bodies. We also have a soul, which is our emotional part. And we also have a spirit, which is our, 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 the spirit of the part of what that connects with the supernatural. And um, it's very important to now say that actually in the Royal, the Royal College of Psychiatrists is actually acknowledging the fact that um, we as psychiatrists need to be paying spirit, uh, attention to the spiritual needs of our patients or to the spiritual needs of the community that we serve because um, there was a recent survey by the Royal College of Psychiatrists that actually showed that there, there's a spiritual dimension to that, um, that um, our client group actually would like us to address their spiritual needs, which is quite interesting. Um, so that's the tripart care model. And I also wanted to introduce my co-hosts today. I've got two, um, two of my daughters who are co-hosting with me. I've got my, uh, uh, my daughter by marriage, uh, B, um, who is one of our co-hosts. Um, B is co-hosting with us. She, um, she's a psychology student and she writes a, she actually writes a blog. It matters to B, which is quite a very interesting blog. I find that blog really very engaging and very, uh, I learned a lot from the things that she writes. So uh, B is going to put her uh, blog uh, address. She's going to put her, her blog um, um, link on the on the chat for us. And also, I've also got another daughter, my daughter from my younger sister, who is equally um, and by all intents and purpose, my daughter um, Je Jemima. Jemima is also co-hosting with us today. Jemima is going to be a, a doctor very very soon, and that's something I'm really excited about. Um, because I've known her from the cradle. Um, so it's good to have Jemima and be um, co-hosting with us today. Um, Jemima's uh, Instagram um, um, details is gem, that's J-E-M underscore 5800. And Jemima is also going to um, put her details on the screen. So uh, the hub is a very, it's a safe, I call it a safe, sensitive, solution-focused space. It's a safe, sensitive, solution-focused space a place where we can all interact together and but it's going to be a safe place so people can feel free um, you can be sure that the confidential details you share here would remain here and that nobody we are not going to in it we are going to be nice to each other we are going to be kind to each other and we are going to support each other emotionally the style of the probably way the, the hub runs is that we will usually be very interactive and you will see that play out this evening uh, will be very inter interactive. Um, I usually also try to make a link to the last um, to the last um, hub meeting that we had. The last hub meeting, which I would encourage you to check out on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page, if you check YouTube, is Tripart Care. 
So if you try, um, if you type in Tripod Care on YouTube, you'll find us. Um, the last one was on stress management. And that was one that has received very, very good raving reviews. Um, that the, the reviews from, from the last hub has been really, um, I still get them, they, they keep coming in. Um, people have said they found them really very, they found the, the content really very helpful and that they found it really very practical. So I would encourage you to check that out um, um, this um, when, you, when we finish today. So I think that's about that. And the other thing I wanted to say is that um, intermittently through the period of this meeting, we will be doing reflection um, sessions. The reflection is really for you to, I, I find that many times when I go to um, educational meetings, to CPDs, um, continuing continue professional meetings, if I'm not able to reflect right there and then I write down my thoughts, what am I learning now? What am I, what, what, have I, what, what am I more aware of in terms of my clinical practice? I may find out that by the next day or two, I'm not really in tune with those things again, and I've lost the learning. So that's why I actually encourage people to write down things. And we are going to have those um, reflective sessions so you can really unpack those thoughts. You can really come in touch with your emotions and come in, in touch with your learning and actually document them. Um, the other thing I wanted to say for today is that because we are talking about emotions and some uh, toxic emotions, some people might find that you find the content sensitive. Some people might find that you actually, it opens up a kind of warmth for you. If that happens, I encourage you to please get in touch. Um, the last, we, we, this is a very safe and sensitive place. And if you find any of any of the content, maybe it opens up some wounds for you. Um, please do, um, please do let let know. Do, do contact us for support, because the 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 whole essence of this meetings is to actually support people and to promote to promote mental well -being, well being and emotional well being. So if you find the content in any way, uh, if it or if it strikes a chord, a raw chord with you, please by all means um, get in touch, and we we can support you further. Right. Okay. Um, usually, I do always give a uh, write a disclaimer because um, because this is an informational purpose event. So it's for informational purposes only. It's a, a public mental health event. It's not a uh, it's not a personal consultation. And I encourage that if anyone has issues um, that they need to deal with in terms of um, really in, in terms of emotional issues that need to be addressed. Um, it's very important that you then get in touch with your primary care provider, which in that case would be your either your family physician in in the, um, um, in the states or in Canada, and in um, in in the UK to be your general practitioner. Well, I ask that we please that everyone please um, check that you are muted. There's a background noise. Please just check that you are muted. Could I ask that you mute your phone, please? Okay, thank you. Right. Okay, and I've talked about the fact that um, I've made my, I've done my due diligence to provide accurate, um, sensitive information, up to date information. But as you know, these things cannot always be guaranteed. Right. So, what are we going to get through today? We've got quite a very big agenda. What are toxic emotions? Uh, you see, everybody talks about toxic emotions. What are they really? In the real sense, what are they? How can you find out whether you're in a toxic relationship? Sorry, I, I said toxic emotions. I meant toxic relationship. What are toxic relationships? What are the toxic relationship red flags? Because you know that in, in my experience as a psychiatrist, and my experience generally in life is that really when you see people who are in a toxic relationship, when you see a toxic relationship, particularly if it's a long-term relationship, when you speak with the people who are involved, many, many times the warning signs were there all from the outset. Um, it's just that they weren't picked up. So what are the red flags um, for, for toxic relationships? I'm glad that there are quite a lot of parents who are in here today, as well as young people, because one of the roles of, of uh, one of the things that is important in community is that there can be generational exchange where the older people can actually pass on experience and can actually support younger people in their life decisions and their life experiences. So I'm happy that there are parents here today, there are, there are counselors, there are, there, are, there are coaches, there are mentors who can actually support younger people in their decision making in terms of bouncing ideas of them. So um, we're going to also cover psychological weapons of toxicity. 
what are the weapons that are that that feature what are the emotional exchanges that take place in in toxic relationships and how can you objectively assess your um your relationships many times young people say should i quit or should i quit is, is this somebody i should be thinking about a long-term relationship with or is this going to be toxic for my future should i really be living or should i be staying and and today i'm hoping that we can cover that looking at your relationships and then boundary setting that's really very powerful how do you set healthy boundaries in your relationship and that's not just for young adults it's actually for everyone we all need to set our boundaries in our relationships to be to remain healthy and then what what's the to toxicity recovery plan if you've been in a, a toxic relationship or you're just recovering from one how do you recover yourself how do you come back to the place where you can you can engage um emotionally again in a very safe and sensitive and healthy way and then i'm going to share some very um relevant um, um, resources and then we are going to take some questions and answers and if at any time during the um session you have a question please just um um, indicate by raising your hands and then i can there is some background noise please let's mute our uh, um, assets um please mute yourself so everybody can have um an interesting experience of this please okay I, i'm going to ask um b uh, b and some um, and jen please please mute everybody so um please mute also mute everyone can everyone hear me yeah good right so a toxic relationship is basically a relationship that is toxic in terms of it's harmful to your physical to your emotional to your financial or spiritual or social well-being that's what a toxic relationship is and the, th the first point i want to make this this evening is that a toxic relationship is not necessarily an emotional or intimate relationship it's not necessarily it's not restricted to um intimate relationships so it's not really restricted to uh to people who are married it's not restricted to people who are in a relationship in terms of who are courting or uh it's not in, in, in restricted to boyfriend girlfriend relationships it actually spans across um the playground in terms of relationships between friends can be toxic relationship in the in the workplace can be toxic that's why i put boardroom there relationships uh among couples can be toxic relationships in families can be toxic you can have a toxic relationship with a sibling or, or an auntie or an uncle or, or a cousin. Relation, such relationships can be toxic. And I've put a crash there because parenting relationship, there's toxic parenting as well. And I'm glad that there are parents who are on, on, the, on, the, on the call tonight because really parenting a relationship, a parent, toxic par parenting is something that, I, that I'm really very passionate about putting information out there because when we are toxic as in our parenting style we're actually creating few uh, we're actually creating trouble not only for the now but for the future because basically we are raising children who are then going to be emotionally damaged and they are going to go on to become um to become emotionally damaged but not only to become emotionally damaged to actually raise children who are also emotionally damaged and uh, for those who might be interested in in content of that i wrote an article for testify magazine one of the things i didn't say was that i'm also a columnist i write a mental column um every month for text a testify Mag testify newspaper which is a london community newspaper and in that um, um if you check them on their on their website um, i wrote an article called what what um, children need to become emotionally balanced um, um, adults what children need to become emotionally balanced and, and socially adjusted adults. So that would be a, um, an article to check out. So toxic relationships, as I said, uh, um, they cut across board. It's not just about one, it's not just about intimate relationships. And the thing to note about them is that they are marked with conflict, competition, and control. If you can see any of these features in any relationship that you are in, conflict, there's regular conflict, conflict there's competition, there's control, you may actually be in a toxic relationship. You need to look further. Bottom line, in a, the way to, the bottom line in terms of deciding whether I'm in a toxic relationship or not is 
does this relationship add value to me or is it depleting me? That's, that's, you, you, you see many times I, I see people, I, it, the toxicity is they are staring you in the face because you can see all these signs. But people are still asking, oh, is this relationship good for me? Uh, um, should I continue with this friendship? Should I really? It, it, it's there. It, it's there staring us in the face. It, it's apparent that th there's toxicity here and that this is not adding to you. So if it's not adding from you, it's to you and it's taken from you in such a way that you're feeling depleted, you're feeling unsupported, you're feeling misunderstood, demeaned, attacked or drained, then you are most probably in a toxic relationship. And one acid test is how do you feel in your energy levels in terms of your emotional energy and your physical energy when you've interacted in that relationship? If it's a relationship that by the time you, you, you interact, you're like, oh, I need to go to bed. I need to go to bed in terms of either you feel emotionally drained or you feel physically drained, then there might be some toxicity um, in, in, in that, in that um, relationship. And then the other thing is that at its worst, yeah, toxic relationships actually threaten, they threaten physical, psychological, social, um, spiritual, and financial well-being. It boils down to the fact that one of the questions to ask ourselves is, well, how, what, what's this relationship doing to me? What's this friendship doing to me? Is it adding to me or is it, um, is it taking away from me? Right, okay. So I just um, wanted to pop on the chat to see, right, um, to see what's going on there. So um, that's basically what um, toxic relationships are. And I hope that as I'm talking, um, you, you are thinking, reviewing your relationships um, and, and thinking about what that means for you. Right, so this is our first exercise. Like I said, we try to make this as interactive as possible. And this is your first exercise. And I'd like you to start, please start typing in the chat. The question is this, it's a true or false answer, so you can either try true or false. It's a, the question is, being in an intimate relationship is linked to longevity, good health, and better life expectancy. I am a psychiatrist, and I encourage you to please read the question very carefully. So being in an intimate relationship is associated to, it's, it's linked to longevity, good health and better life expectancy so please um i'm quite keen to hear from you okay somebody says true false false true true definitely false 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 okay um okay absolutely yes false not really true okay true 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 okay false false okay false okay right okay not really <laughs> that's an interesting one actually false okay right so I, i'm quite keen can one of the people that say um uh could i have somebody one of those who said yes to that question to please tell me to admit themselves and tell me why they think it's a yes being in an intimate relationship is linked to longevity good health and better life expectancy uh one of the yes um people who, who typed in yes please tell me why you think that it is a yes don't worry. Um, there are no. Uh, it, it's okay to it, it's okay to attempt the question. Um, so it's a very safe place. So I'm I'm keen for one. Uh, play, um, Gem and uh, B, please let um allow people to unmute themselves now. So um, uh, let let's have somebody who says it's it, it, you think it's a yes that being in an intimate relationship is linked to longevity, good health, and better life expectancy. Please unmute yourself and tell us why why you think it's a yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I just look at the the word intimate. You know, right. It's a very positive word. Okay. And that can, you know, be a positive thing and then result in, um, you know, longevity, good health and better life expectancy. So just to be, Right, so thank you. If you, if not, if you cannot be in an intimate relationship and then be abusive to your partner. So that's my own take. Right, thank you. Thank you. I, I like the fact that you used the word can. Um, uh, I like that word. I like the fact that you use the word can, uh, because I agree with you that it can be, it can be. 
Uh, so thank you for for that. Who, who was who was that place? I like to put names to the voices. Okay, right. Okay, so I, uh, okay, and I can see Peter the way he has raised his hand. So please go for it, Peter. Hello. Okay, good Hello. Evening, evening. Good evening. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I I agree. I said true. I, I agree. The relationship is linked to longevity because. Uh, it gives you something to look forward to. Right, okay. When you yeah. have something to look forward to in physical, it also registers in your subconscious that oh, I have to stay healthy for this thing. I have to give this thing. It's it's like a project that your your subconscious mind you're working on. So right. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Peter. So you think that being in an intimate relationship can actually encourage yourself to to adopt yeah, post positive to, to adopt positive life a positive lifestyle and a health. Um, six of those. Sorry, could you please mute um, yourself? I'm up to okay. ceiling to fifty milligram per five now. Right. Uh, our dear pharmacist, please uh, do mute yourself, sir. <laughs> I can see that some prescription. Uh, one of my colleagues is dispensing in the background there. So very interesting. Right. Okay. So let's, um, I'm just going to go back to the charts because I can see some very interesting points that have been made on the chat there. Uh, okay. Okay. Two powder participants have raised their hands. Let's see who is raising their hands. Okay, let's see who are these uh, people raising their hands. Okay, right. Let, let's, okay, I'm, I'm trying to find who's raised their hands. But let's just, go, please go for it. Um, if you've raised your hand, um, please just unmute yourself and and um, give us your view. Sorry, good evening, everyone. I did raise good. my hand. All right, good. Um, so yes, being in an intimate relationship, yes, it is supposed to, I would say, link to longevity. But obviously, um, we can't, intimate relationship does not mean that people's characters are not there. Right. And um, you have the character. So some people can be in a toxic, intimate relationship. It is <laughs> meant to be intimate, quotes and unquote. But unfortunately, we have people's character who then plays a role because you've got the two participants in a relationship. And right. if the character is not right, then obviously it can link to short life. Then you have domestic violence and all that as well. So all that right. would be my view on this. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you very much for that. Um, I like that. Um, that that's, a, that's a very interesting view. Thank you very much for that. And okay, uh, so let I can see that somebody else is raised there. And um, I think it's, is that Femi Olukoya? Okay, somebody's yeah. Um, if your answer is raised, please just please go just for go it. For it. Yeah. yeah, um, that's me. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. This is Femi. Um, right. This question is quite a bit vague in the sense that <laughs> when you say uh, longevity, to mm -hmm. me, longevity is quite a very complex um, thing because one of the things that you also have to consider here is the p person that you're referring to. Yeah. Um, have to look at their family tree in their family. You know, there are certain families, I'm no offense to anyone, but in certain families, they don't live long past certain age due to various health reasons or whatever that is associated or factors neglecting right. any spiritual factor. But okay. when the intimate relationship being a main um, factor in consideration to longevity, I don't really think so. But at okay. the same time, it could be a surrounding factor that could help it. All right, um, okay. You know, people who have like terminal um, terminal illness, there has been studies that shows that terminal illness, when you have good relationship or people surrounding you, it can help you pull through that stage. So All it right. is more borderline really and not really. So you have to okay. do you know. All right, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I like the fact that you are not making any commitment to to any any of the views um you are saying this is a possibility i'm just going to take uh 
I think there are two other people who've raised their hands. I'm going to take those and then um, we'll, we'll then move on. Uh, I'll give a view and then we'll move on. So uh, I think there are two other hands raised. Okay, I think. Please, if your hands are raised, please just um, go ahead and um, I know there are two other people who've raised their hands. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is um, Folu Oshin. Um, I kind of have a, a problem with this. Uh, All right, <laughs> okay, right. Because I think that he says being in an intimate relationship, uh, yes, I like the word intimate, but the relationship there is not defined. It doesn't say okay. whether it's a positive relationship or a negative relationship. So I, I kind of feel like this is false because it, it's just you know, not fully descriptive of what kind of relationship we're talking about because you could All have right. an intimate relationship with someone and it could be negative, it could be totally toxic. So that's my view. All right, thank you, thank you. I think someone is reading my script, thank you. Um, and there was some one other person, please um, unmute yourself and then... Uh, uh, this is Tola. I'm, yes. I'm going to take a slightly divergent view of what we're right. talking about. Okay. Because I'm going to go a little bit more broad on okay. that expression relationship. Uh, mm. Not everybody is in an intimate relationship. Not everybody is in a boy-girl relationship. Not everybody is married. The most important thing, and I think that's what Dr. Ajayi has been saying, so I'm just uh, running up that rabbit hole with you, uh, Dr. Ajayi, bear with you. Okay. If you can be in a relationship, I use myself for, for an example. I'm super connected in my community, yeah. extremely connected in my child, and yet I'm a single person. And, and I'm not bragging, and I'm super healthy. It is whatever it is at all that surrounds you that promotes your health and well-being and excellent outcomes health-wise. That's actually what defines a good relationship for anybody. Right. anybody. That's right. why I said mine is a little bit slightly different. I'm going to look at it from, from that standpoint of what if you're not intimate with anybody? You can be positively connected within your community and it promotes yeah. good outcomes for you. Yeah, thank, thank you very, very much for, for that point. Uh, so uh, I, I think that the, um, I think what's happened is each each speaker has progressively built built up to the answer. Yes, um, I think the, the, I've, I deliberately phrased the, the sentence that way. So. No, not, it's not said anything about whether the relationship is positive or, or negative. The reality is that positive, intimate relationships and intimate does not is not necessarily physical. Um, there's there are emotional relationships that are, um, no physical. There's no no physical contact involved. But uh, but, but there is the, um, there is um, emotion in, in terms of being able to bear your heart emotionally. Now the reality is that toxic relationships, even when they are intimate, are actually linked to income to to um to uh, to um to uh, compromise lifestyle reduce longevity so the fact that whatever chronic um close relationships that are that are chronically unhappy are linked to various health conditions and that's the point i want to make um in fact there was a british um, civil service study nine thousand people were studied that's quite a large study um, they found out that um, when they studied, they, they, this was in 2007, uh, they found out that um, when people were studied, uh, those who had uh, who reported that their, their close relationships, not necessarily, it could be friendship, it could be family, it could be a, a, spouse, a spousal relationship, that those who actually reported that those relationships were decided, that, they, that they, they were not satisfied in them, they had a 34% increased risk of heart problems. Not only so, they also showed that people who are in prolonged conflict, that prolonged conflict in relationships was linked to um, reduced self-reported health and more health issues. So the more chronically, the more aggrieved you are in your relationships, the more likely you are to have physical and mental problems. That's quite interesting. So that's why toxicity is not something to be played around with. Um, when people are chronically stressed as a result of relationships and relationships, in, the, in my clinical practice, relationships are found out as being one of the commonest reasons why people complain about chronic stress. It, it's very, very common. Um, and and it, could be, it, it could be work bullying, it could be all sorts of, 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 of relationships where you have close contact with somebody or, or, or a, a, somebody or a group of people, but it's perpetually giving you aggros. And when that happens, it needs to be addressed 
because um, it's, it's not good for your health in any way. So um, the other thing, um, I think the point has been made already. There are also, research also shows that um, um, when people, when somebody is in an intimate relationship in which both parties have different ways of res resolving or coping with anger, when there's resentment, when, 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 when anger is unresolved, that both people actually have carry a higher risk of earlier death. That, that's also quite profound. And the other thing they found was that um, relationship agros, relationship acts have been associated as, um, have been linked to pre precipitating depressive illnesses and anxiety. So really, um, these are the reasons why um, um, it, it's important to actually uh, to, to re address these issues. Then, uh, of course, we also do know that the other thing that said that research shows us is that there's a link between the, the person that you are closely linked with, particularly uh, a, a partner, can actually affect your health um, and lifestyle choices. That if you are, uh, for instance, if you are trying to live healthy in terms of if you are trying to uh, address obesity, alcohol use, and drug use, that if you have a supportive partner in that relationship, you are more likely to achieve your goals than if you have a partner that, that is bringing you down by doing exactly the same thing that you are trying to run away from. So all of this can help us to actually assess our relationships and to think um, um, in way to think about how what impacts um, those relationships are having on our lives. Okay, right. So let's move on very quickly. Um, right. Uh, this slide is one that I feature almost all the time in my in my uh, presentations. And that's because it just mental. This is all about mental health. It's about emotional well-being. And the reason I featured this slide is because when you look at this slide, it's very busy, and you are wondering. Mental health is in the middle of it, but what exactly is mental health? Is it suicide? Is it grief? Is it stigma? Is it cognitive? Is it drugs? Is it anxiety? What exactly is mental health? At the end of the day, the reality is that uh, uh, mental health is actually a state. It's not just an absence of mental illnesses, and I think that's profound. So there are people who say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I've not had a breakdown. M my mind is together. So that means I'm mentally well, but maybe not necessarily so. Uh, so basically, mental health is a state of, it's not just, according to the WHO, the World Health Organization, mental health is not just an absence of, the, of mental illness. It's, it's actually a state of well-being in which an individual is able to fulfill, to realize their, or, or fulfill their potentials. They are able to cope with the normal stresses of life. So, for instance, there might be somebody who is in a toxic relationship, for instance, but they are managing that relationship in a way that is not taking a toll on their mental health. And we're going to go, go to that. How do you manage toxic relationships that you have to, that you can't cut your, you can't stop being somebody's sister or somebody's brother or somebody's son or, or somebody's dad because it's toxic. So you can't stop. You can't. You can't break. You can't. There's a but. There's a way you can manage those relationships. So they they're able to cope with the normal stresses of life. They're able to uh, work productively and they're able to make a fruitful contribution to community. So every time I go into consultation, those are the things I'm looking for. Is this person in a state of well-being? Are they fulfilling their maximizing their potential? Are they coping with the normal stressors of life in the uh, stressors of life that life is throwing at them? Are they working productively and fruitfully? And are they making a, a, a contribution to society? And the other thing we do know about mental um, about mental health is that um, right. Um, the other thing we do know about mental health is this: that um, mental health is also a spectrum. Uh, people say it, it's not just about a mentally, uh, a mentally health, um, a mentally well or not mentally unwell. It's not. It's not like that. It's not a fixed state. It's a spectrum, and people tend to move along that spectrum depending on what's happening in their lives at that particular time, and depending on how they are coping with it. So you have people who um, state of being healthy. That's right. Uh, right at the other extreme where you're on top of the uh, of the ladder and everything is going well. You are, you are fulfilling. You are ticking all the four boxes uh, that we we talked, spoke about earlier. And then there's a place when people are just coping. Maybe life has thrown stress at you. The lockdown has taken place. Somebody has lost their job or they are actually in a toxic relationship and that's putting, they've just met somebody. Maybe it's a new friendship or a new boss or, or they've just been, um, or they've just met a new partner or, uh, or, or the relationship has turned sour or they are in 
or maybe they, they've moved into a new community and they, there is a hostile, perpetually hostile neighbor. There is a relationship that's stressing them out. But because they've got coping skills, maybe because there is, there is another supportive neighbor, there's a supportive parent, there's a supportive friend, or there's a counselor they are speaking to, they are coping. They are not at their best, but they, they are not broken. They are not stretched. However, if all of those coping skills or some of those coping skills are removed, then they begin to struggle. And they begin to struggle because things begin to, it's like you are juggling so many balls in the air and you begin to drop one or two of them. You begin to miss, you begin to socially isolate yourself. You, maybe it's affecting sleep, it's affecting appetite. Maybe it's affecting your life choices. Maybe people are turning to alcohol or drugs or using other things to cope. It could be even using things like uh, using television, using social media to cope. Eventually, if there's no, if attention is not paid to that, to that issue, What's then going to happen is from from struggling, missing work, sleeping late at night, not being able to sleep, sleeping, um, staying up worrying. From struggling, people will actually can actually become unwell, in which they have a breakdown. Um, they are not able to function at all in community or in society again. They are not able to fulfill their um, their their duties. <coughs> and, um, so it's always so that that's what the mental spectrum is like. Uh, and then, so in terms of uh, in in terms of what are the relationship toxic relationship red flags, because I, I think that that's really something that that is important for us to to look at. So, one, if you are in a relationship, you are, remember that relationship here is a loose word. Relationship here is not necessarily. Uh, we are not talking about just um, uh, intimate relationships in terms of it, it, it's across board. If you are in a relationship in which there's lack of support, you are not getting holistic support in terms of emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, financial support, um, you need to look at that relationship because that might be a sign of toxicity, particularly if the support is actually being deliberately withheld. When that person, person is in a position to support you, but they are not supporting. One, um, the other thing to look out for will be presence of toxic emotions, anger, jealousy, envy resentment and that is very closely linked the uh, the envy the jealousy is closely linked to controlling behavior when you t when they send you a text even if you're at work you need to answer right now if you don't answer in five minutes another text comes in another text comes in or or, or when you're out with your friends he's on the phone or she's on the phone wanting to know your every move and every minute of what you are doing if that's happening and you can feel that you almost feel stifled it's like you almost feel like emotionally stifled that might actually be an indication that you are dealing with a toxic relationship. Habitually blaming or putting you down, disrespecting your values. And um, I know there are young people in the in the room today, there are people young, possibly young adults. Um, and I, one of the things I said earlier today was that um, um, but as a res result, um, a, one of the roles that my wife and I play is that we sometimes support young people in their premarital classes. One of the things we see at those classes is your values, you need to you should be sure that your values match. Because if your values don't match, then there can be trouble in the future. And if you are you and you can see the telltale signs now that the values don't match. For instance, um it, when, when we talk about boundaries, we'll talk about this as well. For instance, very simple values. Simple values in terms of okay, um my value, my moral value, and my uh, my my moral point of view and my based on my faith is that uh, I'm a wait till marriage person. Uh, I'm a no sex before marriage person. If you're in a relationship with somebody who's pushing that boundary and putting pressure on you to change that value, then maybe it's something to consider. Maybe it's time to step back and think that what other values of mine are going to be pushed when the relationship progresses. When there's dishonesty and transparency, I see this a lot among young people and sometimes also among um, older people. So um, he doesn't want to, or she doesn't want to introduce you to any of her friends. She doesn't want you to meet um, any of her, her family. She doesn't want to feature you on any of her social media platforms or his social media platforms. In fact, your relationship is in secrecy. If that's happening and they, and they are making efforts to actually conceal that relationship, it's an alarm bell that it might be toxic. And the other, the other extreme of that poll is when they isolate you from your family. They isolate you from your friends. They, are, they just want to have an exclusive right to you. That might also be because uh, 
uh, that, that that might be controlling behavior and it, it is a sign of toxicity. Um, when you walk on eggshells around them, you, you are not really yourself. You, you feel like you are intimidated and you are just treading on eggshells. Um, when the relationship is such that it's making you not um, attend to your personal needs, you're, you are neglecting yourself, you are not sleeping well, you are not eating well, you are always ruminating and worrying, it might be um, uh, signs of toxicity. When there's a toxic style of communication, sarcasm, back talk, when you hear about things about yourself from somebody that the person you are in a relationship with or in a friendship with or, or a family member has back, back talked about you, all of those are toxic communication styles. Very key one, when they are never wrong. In relationships, we if it's it if, if we are if we are in a relationship for long enough, a friendship, a marriage, um, a courtship, uh, a, 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 seeing each other, uh, boss, boss, um, so subordinate relationship, we will step on each other's toes. But if you are all if the, that person is never never wrong and they never apologize, then that might also be um, a sign that you are in a toxic that is you are in a toxic zone. So currently, uh, very quickly, I said that one of the things we are going to do today is that we are going to look at um, we are going to look at structural um, structured objective ways of assessing your relationship, and this is uh, the relationship assess assessment skill, which was devised in um, put together in 1988, so it's been around for quite a while, is a good tool to use. It's seven questions, and you rate yourself on a Likert scale from zero to five. Zero is the least um, score, and five is the best score. And what it what this has found out, it was initially devised for for, um, for couples, but however, it's now progressed even beyond that, where um, they've done some studies to show that actually it can be used in other relationships, friendships, it can be used in uh, in, in um, family relationships, it can also be used in um, um, maybe um, professional relationships to assess the quality, um, just being by adapting it. So the question is. How well does your partner or, or the person, the other person, meet your needs? And if you do, if you if you must know how well they meet your needs, you must know your needs. Because one of the things I always say in terms of assessing relationships and the quality of the relationship is what am I bringing in? What exactly am I bringing into the relationship myself? How am I? What what, what is what what am I bringing in? Because if I don't know what I'm bringing in, if I don't know what my needs are, then it's very difficult for me to be able to. Uh, to be able to actually express those needs and to be able to see whether they are being met or they are not being met. So it's very important. Um, so how well are my needs being met? In general, how well am I satisfied with the relationship? How, how do, I, do, I feel, do I feel really satisfied with the relationship? How good is it compared with, with others? I, and I think that's one that one has to take with a pinch of, pinch of salt because you need to set your own standards. And then to what extent has your relationship met your original expectation? Usually, the reality is that when we go into any relationship, at the back of our minds, we are looking at what we are going to contribute, but in the reality, there is mutuality as well. What is it that I'm getting from this? And is it what, when I aimed to go into this, when we wanted to start off, what was my intention? And um, is, that, is that intention being met? Am I, do I feel, am I feeling fulfilled in terms, of, um, in terms of where we are? And the other thing is, how much do I, do I love the person? How much and how much if it's a friendship? How much do I do I re regard the person? How much do I like the person? And then how many problems are there? Problems here because really, if we sit down, and step back, and assess relationships, many times the reason why we cannot see the toxicity is because we are not being objective. If we just have a little tool like this to really put pen to paper and write things down, it will be that there right in your face, staring you in the face. It's just so easy. You can really look at it on paper and say, oh my God, how come I've been so blind spotted? How come I've been so blindsided all along? Because it's there, it's black and white. And this is a very simple tool to use um, in, terms of, um, um, in terms of assessing the relationship. Um, so basically, yeah, um, the Likert skill is actually um, it, it's it, the, the Likert skill that I described earlier is actually um, it's it's a spectrum from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Strongly disagreeing being zero, and then strongly agree being um, being five. Uh, I can see here 
Okay, uh, Mrs. Oshin, I can see you've put up your hands. Uh, you've raised your hands. Um, please, um, let's let's hear you. Please unmute yourself, and. Oh, I didn't. I think it's from the last time. Oh, all right. Okay, that's, about that. Yeah, that's fine. It looks like it's a legacy hand. Right. Okay. So now with all oh, with this in mind in fact i encourage you to please take a photo of this and the reason why i'm encouraging you to take a photo is because the next slide is going to be a reflective one we are going to do some reflective work we are going to think about our own relationships and look at and assess them um particularly if it's a relationship that you've been wondering what am i bringing in here um what what is this person bringing in is this a friendship i should really continue with is this somebody i should be really close to um um, that will help you. So I'm going to ask you to please take a photo of this so that you can then, add, um, on the next slide, you can then do the reflective work. And whilst we are doing that, I would just like to um, recognize two people who are, who are online with us today um, because they are very dear people to me. This is all about relationships. And relationships are really, when you are in good relationships, um, um, they can be very enriching. And when you are in toxic relationships, they can be very damaging. So I'd like to recognize two people who are also here on the on, um, on the call tonight who have been powerfully enriching to me. Um, I've got my uncle who has logged in all the way um, from, um, from Nigeria. Um, uncle Johnson, Father Bai, I really, really appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. And I've also got my my medical education mentor. I know Penny is not going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, Penny um, is my medical education mentor, and she's uh, been a very powerful force in developing my um, Penny Morris. Um, she, literally, many, many years ago, I attended a course, and she head hunted me and literally has supported me in my medical education role ever since then. Um, she started off being my mentor and we are now very great friends. So thank you, Penny, for joining us today. And thank you for being um, an enriching person in, in, in my life and supporting all these um, dreams. Right, okay, so um, I, I expect that. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, it says, pause and reflect. So this, and I encourage everyone to please do this. Uh, it, it, that's the reason why we are doing it. Um, reflect on your own relationships based on what you know now. Write down any warning signs you may identify and in which relationships they exist. Yeah? You, don't worry, you're not going to share it with anyone. It's really for your own reflection. It's really for you to, uh, to reflect and to think through things, particularly in relationships that you may not have been sure, may, maybe, yeah, it could be. It could be even. It could even be a work relationship, a toxic work environment, because it's not just individuals that you have toxic relationships with. Sometimes they're actually toxic work environments, and if people continue for long enough in them, they are actually damaging their potentials in several ways. So um, it's also important to to bear that in mind. So let's just. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Penny. So let's just do that and. Um, and we can just spend the next few minutes let's spend the next few minutes doing that and looking at our relationships like i said you don't need to share it with anyone i'm going to keep quiet now i have a knack for talking when i'm asking people to reflect which is not very ideal so i'm going to
Right. Okay. So how how did we find that? Okay. How did you find that? Yeah, uh, Mr. Ladakpa said, apart from marital ones, it's not every one relationship that can last forever. Friends, maybe for a time and a season, we need to learn when to let go. I absolutely agree with that. Um, I absolutely agree with that, that sometimes, um, it, and that's why it's important to constantly review our relationships and, and, and see where we are with them. Sometimes people are in our lives for a season and, and, and those relationships um after a particular time and then um we then need to move on from from there, there um absolutely there are people who agree with that okay so um right um and also uh, also in the room with us to now um, this afternoon this evening it will be afternoon in virginia is my baby brother um, Olua Sheon, who has uh, also a very powerful relationship in my life Thank you, Oluwashim, for making time to join us out of your very busy schedule. Uh, really much appreciated. Thanks. Right. So um, what are the psychological weapons that people use in relationships, uh, in toxic relationships? What are the psychological weapons that when you find you can be, you know that this is toxic? Bullying is one of them. Um, I've made an example. When people are coercive, when you are, when you, when you feel that, when, when people are coercive and you have been first, uh, uh, or being emotionally driven to do things that um, that that is not in um, agreement with your values, then that is certainly um, uh, a psychological weapon that is toxic to you, and it's one of the toxic things um, to, um, uh, weapons of people who, uh, of the abuser. Some and the other thing to note is that it's not all the time that uh, relationships uh, that toxic relationships are, are meant intentionally abusive. Sometimes it's just that the other person is not, does not realize even what they are doing to you. And that's why it's important for you to define your own. And we're going to come to boundary settings very soon. That's why it's important for you to define what is what are my needs in this relationship? Are they being met? And if they are not being met, then it's very important to have that open conversation. It's very, very important. Um, gaslighting is another one. Gaslighting is when somebody is in a relationship with you. Remember, we are not talking about just intimate relationships here. It's loose, loose in terms of relationship. When somebody who is in a relationship with you is actually gaslighting in terms of they are twisting information that they are giving you. They are deliberately giving you information that is wrong. They are, they are, they are basically playing mind games. Mind games in to the point in which you question your own feelings, you question your own judgment, and you question your own sanity. Gaslighting is called. It's very, very common in abusive relationships, and it's a weapon that abusers use. When that is happening, there are no doubts about it. You are in a toxic relationship, and you need to do something about it, because if you don't, you are damaging yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and you are also creating problems for your future, because it also damages um, self-esteem as well as self-confidence. Fear and discrimination. Um, when you feel intimidated, when 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 it's a particularly if it's a professional relationship and there is intimidation, um, you are being threatened uh, for consequences uh, by the boss. Then it, it, it that's 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 unhealthy. Splitting splitting is when you set one against the other. So uh, one of the things that pe people who are deliberately being toxic in a relationship do is that they they try to alienate you from the supportive relationships in your life and what they do is they then set you against those relationships so they say things about you uh and then say things about them to you so that you they knock your heads together and in that case that's also um a, a toxic it's also toxic matterdom matterdom is about playing the victim so um you see the last 10 boyfriends that i've had have left me the last 10 boyfriends that I had, they always left. So are you trying to leave me as well? So there's nothing about the fact that um, you don't value any of, you don't value anything I say. There's nothing about the fact that you are not meeting my needs emotionally. There's nothing about the fact that you're always putting me down in, in presence of your friends. All that is important to you is that the last 10 boyfriends left you and I'm going to leave you as well. So you are playing the victim. You are the victim. The last 10 people have left and now you want to be the 11th person who will leave me. And of course, matterdom is also very very linked to guilt stripping, making you feel guilty about your decisions. 
If you leave me, I'm going to take my life. If you leave me, I'm going to do, I'm going to harm myself. I'm not, and, and I need to say this very carefully, that sometimes actually uh, people being, being jilted can actually lead to that. But if somebody is using it as an emotional weapon to actually control somebody else, then that's not a healthy place. It's not a, a very healthy place to be. Um, I, can, um, I can see that Claire Newman has raised her hands and I'm going to come to you in a minute. Um, uh, I acknowledge, um, okay, sometimes um, I acknowledge that and I'm just going to come to you in a minute, but um, I just wanted to quickly read the, all the, um, catch up with the charts. Gaslighting is very interesting, yes. Sometimes the person don't know even that the action is toxic, that's true. Sometimes people who are toxic don't know. Gaslighting, yes, gaslighting, like I said, is really when somebody, um, some, so somebody is playing mind games on you. They are twisting the information you give them. They are using lies um, and manipulation to make you doubt yourself, um, to make you doubt your, your instincts, to make you doubt your own, um, to make you doubt your own judgment. And at some point, if, if it's intense to make you actually doubt your own sanity, it's like, did I say that? Did I not say it? You're, you're almost so unsure of yourself because they've, they've continually fed you with lies and continually manipulated the truths that you've given them. Emotional blackmail, yes, that's another one. Um, okay, um, thank you very much. Um, Sapin Pekin says it's very eye opening. Um, it's clear, crystal clear to know if our relationship with family or close friends and loved ones are toxic or not. Yes, thank you. Right, so um, Claire Newman, please, please don't go for um, please um, um, unmute yourself and um, make your point, please. Um, um, share with us what you would like to say. It's Claire Newman there. Please unmute yourself and um, I can see you raised your hands. Okay, uh, I'll just go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, could you please allow Claire to unmute herself? Let's just um, allow people, everyone to unmute themselves now, uh, B and um, Let's please let's allow everyone to unmute themselves. So Claire can unmute herself. Hello. Uh, uh, hello. Hello. Okay. That's one. So, so could you please unmute um, yourself? Um, Claire is Claire is the only one who would like to um unmute herself now, so we can hear. Um, yeah. Hello. Okay, B, 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 uh, B, could you please find Claire and unmute Claire while you mute everyone else? Please find Claire and unmute her and then mute everyone else. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? So please unmute Claire now so Claire can, can um, make a point. Okay, I'll I'll just go ahead and then as soon as Claire, as soon as you are muted, please um go ahead and, and share um, your thoughts. Right, okay. So the next point I want to make is this. What words come to your mind when you think of the word boundaries? When you think of the word boundaries, what other words come to your mind? Anything, anything associated with boundaries? What physical forms of boundaries do you know? Um, so let's go for that. Right, let's start typing in the chat in terms of boundaries. What sort of boundaries do you, what, what words, what other words come into your mind when you think about, the, when you think about boundaries? Okay, rules, good. Wall, space, good. Please. Parameters, physical and mental respects of boundaries. Okay, keep keep your distance. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> limits, limits, respect. Good. Yeah, Lua, thank you for that. Self safeguarding. Yes, you need boundaries to safeguard yourself, and that's not there's nothing selfish about that. Thank you for that. 
There's nothing selfish about really maintaining your boundaries. Priorities, yes very important you know what priorities you are bringing into the relationship binding principles do's and don'ts i like that listening yes um clear clear newman says listening um uh, keep 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 to yourself okay, that's an interesting one okay so, um so energy time allocation yeah time allocation could um uh, yes it could mean um <laughs> Uh, someone is just written in Yoruba, <laughs> which means full stop, limits, <laughs> standards, good fences, making good neighbors. Okay. Avoid limits. Okay. Rule of engagement. Ooh, I like that because rule of engagement is actually part of the things. Protocols. Yes, I like that. Protocols are very important. Okay. Thank you. So we, we all have a fair idea of, of what boundaries are. Um, Self-preservation. Respect yourself. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, good. So what? Uh, so let's think of all those words and let's think of them in an emotional way. How do we then translate those boundaries, the fences, the limits, the respecting yourself, um, um, don't come too close, all of those, the social distancing. So how do we emotionally social distance? All right. Um, how do we self-preservation? How do we emotionally social socially distance? So okay. And that brings me to my next point, which is how do you create healthy boundaries? How do you create healthy boundaries? So what are healthy boundaries in the first instance? Every relationship that is going to thrive and is going to be fulfilling and is going to be purposeful needs boundaries. And that's something to write down. If your relationship is going to be fulfilling, and you remember we are talking about relationships across board now, it has to have boundaries. If it doesn't have boundaries, it's liable to toxicity and it's liable to abuse. And that's just the way it is. Um, um, it, it, it's very important that we have boundaries. If we don't have boundaries, um, it, it just creates problems. So one, boundaries help us to feel safe, to feel healthy and to feel comfortable. And that includes parenting boundaries as well. As children, for people who probably have young children here, boundaries are actually very crucial to the emotional well-being and to the emotional development of children. Much as we are not usually told, boundaries are actually good for children. Children might push boundaries, but in the real sense of it, children like boundaries. They actually, it makes them feel content and it makes them feel safe. So when we are not um, putting boundaries down as parents, we're actually setting up our children, not only for, for emotional, um, emotional um, disturbances currently, but for the future. And also, we're also creating trouble for them because you tend to be parent, you tend to parent the way you are parented you must be really very, very intentional in order not to, by default, parent your children the way you are parented. So, so when we are not setting boundaries for our children, we are actually doing them not just a, a disfavor now, but we are also doing them a disfavor for their future. We are actually creating, we are perpetrating gener generational troubles. Um, so good. Um, so it's important that we set boundaries because they make us feel safe healthy and comfortable. They preserve our energy and uh, help us to engage in self-advocacy. So if you are feeling drained all the time in a relationship, emotionally, physically drained, like you just that you haven't done any physical work, but you just feel like that, then there's something wrong. Maybe you need to put boundaries in place. Also physically, if you are all things to all men to the point in which you don't have any time for yourself, and I also know that there are ministers of the gospel in the room today, um, and that's something I always, I'm always I'm very keen to put out there, being a man of life passion myself, being, being on a similar boat, that we need to be careful not to spread ourselves so thin that we are not no use to ourselves um, because we have been so spread so thin and that we're also no use to our immediate family. That's also boundary, boundary setting and it's very important. Boundary setting is an ongoing work. It's not something that you do and you just forget about it. It's something, it's work in progress. It's always happening, it's always evolving, and it's something you must continue to do and to continue to monitor. And it's influenced by our values, by our priorities, and by our purposes. So as I'm saying these things, I'm hoping that you are reflecting, what are my values? What are my priorities in relationships? What am I, what's my purpose? Because all of those things are linked to your boundaries. Those are the things that actually help you to set, set healthy boundaries and to maintain them. 
Um, so it's really very important to do that. And physic and boundaries can be physical, they can be emotional, they can be sexual, they can be work boundaries. For instance, up until May, up until uh, up until very recently, and I still try to maintain that boundary. Up until very recently, I told myself that when I leave work, I will not check my emails. Um, I, and I still try to, I try as much as possible. In fact, up until I became a consultant, I said it was a no, no. There was no way I was going to be checking work emails in um, outside of work. Of course, after becoming a consultant, <laughs> there are times I've, I've not really kept to it, but as much as possible, as much as possible, um, I avoid checking my emails, um, work emails um, outside of work hours. And that's a boundary I've set myself and it's for my emotional well-being. Digital boundaries, that's a very important one. Digital boundaries, particularly for our young people. And just to put it down there, out there, that digital boundaries are very crucial. There is now research showing that excessive di digital time, um, screen time, um, social media time particularly, um, for young people has been linked not only to, um, um, it's been linked to anxiety, it's been linked to depression, and it's been linked to um, um, distorted body image. So anxiety, depression, and distorted body image, particularly among young girls. So there's a reason for you to maintain um, healthy digital boundaries. And for people who want to do that, um, as part of the resources I'm sharing, there's actually a Google link that you can go onto and you can actually um, do a test. It will tell you what your, it will assess you, tell you how well you are doing with your social media and digital use, and it will give you a tailor-made plan specifically for you. Google, it's actually a Google tool. Uh, people don't know it, but it, there is a Google tool and it's free. Um, I've done mine. Um, it gives you a fab, it, it, you answer five or six questions, and it actually shows you how you are faring in your social media use, and it also tells you what you can put in place to control your social media use. Um, financial boundaries very important as well. So, how easy is it for us to set boundaries? How how is this boundary setting? And I'm quite keen to hear from us now as well. Um, please let's type in the chat. I'm quite. I'm um, keen to hear from us. What are, how is this boundary setting? Let's just type in the chat. Is it easy to set boundaries? How is this boundary setting? Okay, listening to others. Okay, yeah. Depends on the situation and my values. Okay. Not always. Okay. Lower says is not always. Loa um, is my younger daughter who is also on the call with us today. Um, I'm quite happy that young people are embracing this. So Loa, thank you for joining us. Is there in some circumstances? Yes. Okay. Okay. It depends on the context. Okay. Yes. Sometimes it depends on how close you are to the people. That's true. Because he, um, being able to have a frank conversation is as long as you, you are true to yourself. I like that. I like being true to yourself, really being able to say that this is who I am. And uh, we are, uh, if this relationship is going to work, then these are the things we need to put in place. I, I particularly like that. It requires self-discipline. Yeah, that's true. Um, it requires self-discipline. Right. Okay, let's go on because I can see it just looks like time is speeding by. So how do we, what are the reasons why we find it difficult to set boundaries? The reality is that in my experience, um, as a clinician, as a psychiatrist, I know that boundary setting is not always easy. Um, and when boundary setting is not easy, uh, when boundary setting is a problem, it can potentially result in toxicity. What are the reasons why boundary setting is difficult? Who here? Please put up your hands. You can you can show by just um, raising your hands in terms of just um, indicating raising your hands digitally. Who here does not like to be liked? Just put up your hands and and if you if you are here and you don't like to be liked, then I would have to I would have to see you and tell and and, and ask you what is your secret is um, at the end of today's uh, meeting. But who here does not like to be liked? Just please uh, you can indicate by just raising your hands up digitally. Say I'm here and I don't like to be liked. I just it doesn't I don't like to be liked. Okay, right. Okay, sister. Okay, okay. you don't like to be liked. That's interesting. Okay, tell us about it then. <laughs> I, I, I think on the overall, let's put it this yeah. way. Uh, okay, go ahead, yeah. 
uh, it, it brings um, uh, uh, some expectations that are beyond me, and okay. you have to, yeah, then you have to, you know, follow with um, you have to, you know, kind of follow the flow. Um, okay. Be, be part of the status quo. All right. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I, I'm. I, yeah. I, I, I get your point. Uh, um. B. I'm going to ask you to please um mute, um mute everybody again, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I, I, I get your point in that regard that um you you don't have to bend um and, and go with everybody's flow, but really as human beings um every one of us there's a desire in us to to be accepted there's a desire in us to be um, acknowledged there's a design the design in us to be it's part of our of, of our basic needs uh, of human beings um so the, the reason why i asked that question was because most of every, human beings like to be accepted human beings like to be cherished human beings like to be appreciated that's one of the reasons why we go into relationships any form of relationship so uh, that's one of the reasons why we find boundary setting difficult the other reason is because if we've not had role models in our life who have set boundaries and effective boundaries in our lives as children then we might find it difficult to set our own boundaries because we tend to parent the way we, uh, we tend to take our from our role models and our caregivers um, when we are growing up the other thing is that in some cultures and in some settings it's unacceptable to say no sometimes it's very difficult to say no in some cultures and in some settings and that could include faith settings as well we are it, it's almost unnatural it's almost you are almost expected to be all things to all men and that can make it difficult to set boundaries lack of skills is it, it, not not everyone is able to know how to really set that so set those boundaries and that's part of the things that we are talking about today stigmatization the fact that some people feel that certain stigmas people who set, people who set standard people who set boundaries are rude and they are, they are selfish but that's not correct it's okay um it's okay to actually set boundaries it's okay to be able to acknowledge that uh, these are my boundaries in this relationship and i expect them to be adhered by because if you don't set boundaries you can't give your best in the relationship if you don't set boundaries and things get sad and it becomes toxic it, it starts depleting you meaning that you can't actually add again to that relationship and that's why it's important um for um for us to be um, constructive in a boundary setting and to be um um, it's okay to actually set boundaries yeah right so 12 um these are 12 signs that you may actually lack healthy boundaries in your life if you find decision making a challenge if you find it habitually if you are habitually guilty about saying no you know one of the most profound things that one of my friends told me years ago was this he said his boss once told him that if you say yes all the time what's your no worth if you say yes all the time how much is your no worth very important thing to think about the reality is that sometimes we need to say no and if you are habitually a yes person or a people pleaser then it might be that you actually don't have healthy boundaries if you feel that you are habitually taken for granted you are chronically emotionally or physically drained you feel you have an identity crisis you you've changed you've molded yourself you carry i was saying something earlier about the fact that uh, mo uh molding yourself to other people's standards you've molded and molded yourself to the point in which you don't know who you are again then there might be uh, problems with um, boundary setting of course the other one is when you have a morbid fear of rejection and abandonment you will do anything just to be accepted you will you will do anything even when it's against your values against your priorities against your purpose then it a warning sign that you are lacking in boundaries right um so those those are um i'm just checking on the on the okay can you see the slides somebody said to um could you see, could we see the slides are you having problems seeing the slides can, please just let me know can can people see the slides uh, yes, sir. It's right, right at the top of the screen and it's right. in small print. Okay. Is it better now? The slides are fine. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. So if you find, if you also find that you are resent, you uh, you have resentment from being unassertive, you say yes to something and then you start, you go home and you complain about it. You start why did i say yes to that 
then it could also be a sign that you don't have any, you, you, are, you are lacking in healthy boundaries. Um, okay, good, thank you. Right, so um, Pixie D, I can see Pixie D has raised their hands. Please go ahead. No, no, it, I don't know how to. Start okay, to all right, all right, that's fine. It's a legacy, hand. <laughs> that's really. fine. No worries. <laughs> okay, so um, so this this is not copyrighted. Um, most of the information I've shared previously uh, uh, are um, original content which I prepared, but this is by Hali Therapy. Um, Hali Therapy. Um, yeah, online, it's it's something I got online, so it's not my uh, my content. Um, it's not my original content, and I acknowledge um, Ali, Ali, uh, Ali Therapy for that. But this is a very good one to actually, um, I would advise people to take a photo of this, because if you can answer these questions, it can actually help you. Uh, be please unmute, please mute everyone again. Okay, right. So if you can answer these questions, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask anyone who has um, any questions. Let's let's leave it till the end. Uh, please just um, note your comments and questions because we still have quite a bit of content, and then we can um, go through that. So please take a photo of this. The reason I'm saying that is because this is a good template for looking for beginning to set boundaries if boundary setting is a problem. Um, um, it's a good template to actually consider. I'm just going to make sure that this is out of the way so that um, people can actually see. So it's a good template. How often do I worry about other people, what other people think about me? Um, when did I last say no to someone? Do I, do I know them? Um, do, what, what are the five rules to, be, to being my friend? Because if you don't know what you're bringing into a relationship, it's difficult to then express your needs. And that's one of the questions you need to answer. What are the 10 things I most like to do with my time? What are the 10 things I most like to do with my time? What do I even have strong feeling? What do I even have strong feelings about things? What are the 10 things I hate to do? If those are the things you need to discuss in, in setting boundaries. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, just, uh, yeah, somebody's just been political there. Um, so when I think about saying no to someone, do I feel afraid or calm inside? All of those are points that actually help us to see. Um, so please take a photo of that. And like I said, it's not my content. It's, um, it actually belongs to Hali Therapy. Right, principles of healthy boundary setting. Clarity, we've talked about it today. Clarity, yeah, you need to, uh, it's very important for us to be clear about what I'm bringing into the relationship. What are my values? What are my needs? How much do I want to go here? What, what is the history of the relationships I've had before? You see, relationships are like onions sometimes. You are bringing in your past experiences, the hearts, the, the joys of other relationships, you are bringing it into this one. And you need to acknowledge those things. If you've been broken before, if you've been heartbroken before, you need to acknowledge that those are the things you are bringing into this fresh relationship and you need to address them because if you don't, they are going to play out in this one as well. Communication, being rational. Communication is about telling, after you've, you, you acknowledge these values, the needs, the limits, the history, the onions you are bringing in, then you need to have a frank talk about really what your boundaries are. Um, these are my boundaries in this relationship. These are what I, this is what I expect. This is what, these are the ways to meet my needs. And these are the repercussions. It's not threatening. It's just about, I would not stand, for instance, I, I, Many times when you talk to couples who, who for instance, are having um, um, violence in their marriage, many, many times, actually, when they were caught in or when, when they, they, they were dating, they had, had that problems. Or when there's a, a perpetual verbal abuse, all of those things, or when there's emotional abuse, they've been present all along. But because they were not addressed, I this is what I'm going to tolerate. Um, if you lift your hand, if then you lift your hand at me, that's, that's goodbye um, for good. So it, it, those things need to be discussed and consistency. You see, you are the ones that dictate how others treat your limits. You are the ones that dictate how others treat your boundaries by respecting your own boundaries. Because if you make boundaries and you don't impose them, other people will not impose them. A case in point, you see, um, I work as a full-time psychiatrist in the NHS, uh, but I also think I have a full-time job outside of, of psychiatry in terms of public mental health, in terms of the charities I work with, in terms of 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 of, of being a member of my uh, of my church pastoral team, in terms of all the other things I do, 
mentor into medicine. However, one of the principles, one of my boundaries is that I won't take calls that are not related to my work or, or, or respond to calls that are not related to my work during work time. That's just a boundary. Because if I do that, then I'm sending a message out that it's okay for you to call me for non-work related issues during work time. It's just, it's just some of those things. Um, and, and those are boundaries that I've had, to, I've had to learn and to put in place. And one of the other things to do about set, setting good healthy boundaries is checking in. You see, you don't just set a boundary and leave it at that. Review times. If, for instance, the relationship is toxic, one of the things you need to do is, okay, we are going to have this frank conversation. In two weeks, we are going to check in again, and where are we? It's not just a blank statement. We are setting boundaries, and that's it. Goodbye, have a good life. It won't work. We need to keep checking in and making sure that how are we getting on with this boundary setting? How are we um, ad adhering to these boundaries? Then, um, commitment. Be ready to take action if required. In terms of, if you set a boundary, and that boundary is constantly being, being pushed, that boundary is constantly being trampled on. You need to decide that this is where I'm going to draw the line in the sound, sand. At some point, I might need to take action. Whatever that action means, I might need to take it. So, okay, somebody has asked, how can I build our self-esteem and make people recognize that I'm relevant in conversations? Thank you. That's a very relevant point. Um, I've actually got a, um, we actually did a series on self-esteem which I could send post you to. Yeah, that's a very relevant point. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, uh, okay, that was a skip. So basically, if you find that constantly, you are in, if you have found out that you are in a toxic relationship, what are the things that you can do? <laughs> what are the things you can do? Um, I've, I've made it, that's an acronym. Um, you can either stay, yeah, I've counted the loss, I've counted the benefits. The benefits outweigh the risk. I'm staying. I want to continue to be your friend. I want to, um, I, I'm going to go ahead in this courtship. I'm, I, I want to go ahead, or I'm going to stay at this work, so work, work. I'm going to remain with this in this work team. I'm going to remain on this job. I've counted the, 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 the losses and the benefits, and the benefits outweigh the risk. So you can stay. But when you stay, it's also good to try and secure the relationship by putting boundaries down. So don't just stay, stay and secure. In, in terms of putting things down that can actually help you to, um, that, will not, they, 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 that will not run you down. And of course, the other thing is you need to set, um, some, sometimes you count the losses and you decide that, yes, I'm going to stay, but at a distance. There are people that you probably will not, you decide not to interact with them on the phone. You only interact with them by email. There are people, for instance, that you say, I'm not going to physically interact with them is only going to be virtually. Those are things that you do to actually protect yourself. And, and those are things that work. It's part of your boundaries, the way, the medium through which you interact with people. And then sometimes the only way to keep your sanity, to keep your mind, to keep your body, to keep your finances, to keep your health generally, and to keep every other part of you is to severe the relationship. That's not something I think should be done carelessly, particularly um, I, I'm not. I'm not flippant here. I'm not saying, oh, um, that's the next thing you should do. Uh, particularly if if uh, one needs to count the consequences of this. But um, usually, it's better to break um, a courtship or to break um, a, a um, to to um, quit at the dating point than um, then have to um, um, quit when people are married. So, what are the things? What are the things that will help you to know whether you need to severe this or not? I'm going to round up very shortly. Awareness, it's very important for you to be aware and it is assessing the other party, the friend, the partner, whoever it is, assessing them. Are they aware that their emotions are toxic to you? Are they aware, for instance, that they have these anger outbursts that, are, that really make you intimidated and make you feel anxious? Some people are not even self-aware at all. They, 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 they don't acknowledge that there's a problem. And if they don't acknowledge there's a problem, then it's a problem. Some people are aware, but they say, what's the big deal? Everyone has an emotional outburst. Everyone has an anger outburst. What's the big deal? It's not a big deal to me. It shouldn't be a big deal to you. So they have, they are aware of the problem, but they are not acknowledging that it's an issue in the relationship. That is a problem. The third one is, even if they are aware and they've acknowledged that there is a problem, that this is a problem in the relationship, are they taking responsibility? Yes, I know uh, I have anger issues. 
um, I don't like it when when I, t I take my anger out on you and I take responsibility to address this, uh, but it's not just verbal. It's not just a mental accent. It's actually taking action. I'm going to go for anger management. I'm going to hold myself responsible. I'm going to read books. I'm going to do things to actually address that part of me. And then the final one is accountability. Not only am I going to um, um, do all these things, I'm going to hold myself accountable to somebody. If you use these five rules, you can, it can actually help you to decide when to quit and when not to quit. Because if, this, if the person you are in a relationship with, uh, of any form of relationship, does not show any of these commitments, you can be sure that they are not ready to change. And if they are not ready to change, you then need to decide, am I ready to stay or um, am I ready to live with what they've got to offer? Right, so this is really about um, confiding in, in what are the things that you need to do in order to recover from a, from a toxic relationship. You need to get support, and sometimes that's professional. Sometimes it's from family and friends. You need to count your losses. What are the things? So poor self-esteem and poor self-confidence is usually one of the things that accompany toxic relationships. What are you going to do about that? You need to acknowledge that I've been emotionally damaged and I need to recover. Be intentional about your care. Be intentional about recuperating, emotionally recuperating, providing yourself opportunities to actually recover. Forgive, resentment, anger, jealousy, strife, all of those things are actually linked. All those um, bad emotions are actually linked with poor mental health and phys poor physical health. So when people say um, forgive, it's actually for your own well-being. Detox your mind. See yourself in a new light. Because not seeing yourself in a new light means that you are still carrying the image that that abuser or that toxic person has, 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 has imposed on you. And you need to um, come free from that. Um, give yourself time. Um, give yourself time to recover. Um, it's very important that you give yourself time to recover. Right, okay. Um, all of this is going to be on, um, I'm going to upload them on uh, on the YouTube channel anyway. So what are the things you bring into a relationship? Authenticity, be yourself, be attentive. Mutuality, be willing to give, but also be willing to take. Reciprocity, exchanging. Parity, being at par, and confidentiality. Um, be, willing to be, uh, be willing to preserve other people's confidentiality uh be willing to preserve other people's confidentiality and just as we these are the further resources um like i said all of this is going to be uploaded on youtube so if you don't catch the resources now you can always catch them later but, um this book boundaries how to stay how to say no and to control yourself uh, your control your life is a good one and then this spotify uh podcast is by ella dove um ella dove um the well and good podcast um, is a good one boundary on is the is the one that actually talks about boundaries um and the world leading expert on on narcissistic relationships which is one of the ones that caused a lot of trouble is dr ramani uh dr ramani she's got a youtube channel as well it's worth following her and um, checking out some of the content that uh, she's given right i can see thank you for everyone who has started giving your feedback um that's much appreciated um, and these are the next, um, these are the things that you can do to benefit from the um, service that Tripart Care provides. You can join our monthly meetings. The next one is going to be on suicide meets and maths or medicine of, 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 of suicide. Um, we are going to, in April, we are going to be talking about depression, facts, figures, and fiction. May, we are going to talk about addiction and substance misuse. Um, we've also got a, some, a WhatsApp group that you can join. If you want to join the WhatsApp group, please type, not personally to me, but in the chat. Because if you type personally to me, it will, it will be lost um, um, during the recording. But if you type um, on the chat, then, uh, or, or you can send us an email. Um, in that case, we can then um, add you to the WhatsApp um, page. And then uh, also, um, the other thing I would encourage you to do, please make noise about this on, um, on, on social media. Um, the the Handle is tripart care. Um, tripart care is the tripart care is the is the handle. Um, is the, is the I'm trying to find the word now. Um, is is yeah. Tripart care is the buzzword. Um, and so save the dates for the next um, um meetings, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is tripart care. That's the name of the um uh um. That's the name of the of the channel. Let's see that I haven't missed anything. Yeah, and then for those who will be interested in some of the other uh, meetings that I do, um, I'm going to be talking about emotionally intelligent parents um, on the 26th of February between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. GMT. Um, 
that the details are on my Facebook page. And also I'm going to be on the 5th of uh, March, also on my Facebook page and my Instagram page. I'll be talking the details on my Facebook page and Instagram page. I'll be talking about um, um, stress management, a scriptural and science-based approach. And so um, these are the things that Tripod Care offers. Um, we offer consultancy in terms of looking at your system and helping you maybe at work to actually uh, make it a safe place, um, emotionally safe place. Um, coaching as an individual coaching. We deliver corporate training to churches, to corporate um, organizations and to charities in terms of keeping your uh, workforce healthy, uh, public speaking and also content creation. And we've done quite a lot of questions and answers today. And this is um, this is um, my contact details. Um, please contact us. And if there are still unanswered questions, I believe there might be some answered questions or unanswered questions in the room. Please, by all means, um, either put them in the chat or please put them in the um, or, or please send us an email or get in touch with us by. Um, by uh, social media any of our social media platforms and we will respond to that so thank you everyone i know it's been a long evening and thank you all for joining us and staying with us um it's been really great having you and i encourage you to check them to to please stay um to mark the dates for the next um Tripod care hub which is on the 20, 31st of march that's the first Thursday, 31st of March um, is when the next one will be taking place. Thank you all for staying with us and I hope that you found this helpful and please by all means get in touch with us, give us a feedback, what worked well for you, uh, what didn't work so well um, or what would you like to see. Thank you all and do have a good evening. And thank you to my team. Thank you, um, B, and thank you, Jemima. Thank you for doing the anchoring job, for doing the cool hosting. <laughs>